All right, so first let's start off with Black Panther. I'm glad to report that it was not just hype. There was some shade cast on this movie, saying that it was being overhyped and um, that it was being artificially inflated as, you know, uh, because it was a black movie and all black cast, mainly, you know, the majority, vast majority, I think there was like one white dude in it. Um, but because it was an all black cast that, you know, that's why it was being propped up so much or, but if it wasn't for that, it wouldn't have been, um, if it wasn't for that element, it wasn't a good movie, etc. And that is complete horseshit. I will say that element did exist. It was like in it, in, in, I don't know if empowering is the the right word, but it was it was an all black cast. It was a great film. It was a movie that African Americans and other minorities were able to be proud of and rally behind and and say, "See, look what we can do." And it's a a major uh, Marvel movie franchise film. It's going to be intertwined with the Avengers story as Black Panther's character, I believe, is like in the comic books and shit. It was a massive, massive box office hit. So it is all that stuff. But the movie was good. It was really good. It was super entertaining. It was, it was, you know, Marvel level quality is like top notch quality when it comes to uh, superhero movies, like number one. Um, the acting was impeccable. It was funny. It was a long movie. I think it was like over two hours. I want to say maybe close to like two and a half around there. Maybe two fifteen, two twenty. Uh, but it was long. But it was it it had no like lulling moments. It kept you. It kept me engaged like the entire time. I didn't know shit before of the uh, like Black Panther story. What else? What else? Um. You know what was really cool that it, it, the the movie like garnered a like a a type of viewership reaction like an inclusiveness with people that went to go see the movie because I heard a lot of stories about this and when I actually went to the theater I saw it myself where uh, I saw a couple women that where there was like a family or whatever and a couple of them were like in complete like african garb which was like cool to see you know what i mean it was like a like a pride like mixed into the experience of watching the movie it's kind of like you know when like sci-fi geeks go to see star wars and dress as like darth vader or some shit you know um that was like a nice a nice uh element to the movie as well and what else i really liked uh my man michael b jordan in it and um He's uh, Wallace from The Wire, who also did, he's done a bunch of shit, and he did, um, uh, like, some soap opera or some shit when he was, he was younger, like, Days of Our Lives, or, like, one of the, well, All My Children, like, all one of those, like, soap opera, soap operas, and, um, he did Fruitvale Station, which I'm gonna speak about in, in a bit as well, and, uh, Creed, uh, most recently, and interesting fact, which was also a dope part of, like, watching this movie, is that the director, Ryan Coogler, directed Fruitvale Station with Michael B. Jordan. He directed Creed with Michael B. Jordan. And now Black Panther with Michael B. Jordan. And it's, like, three levels of uh, budget. It was, like, a very small independent style budget for... Fruitvale Station, then a bunch more for Creed, and then, you know, with Marvel, it's, like, top of the top, budget-wise. So, as a director, Ryan Coogler definitely flexed his range and his uh, scope of film making ability. So, that's pretty cool as well. The movie, I thought the cinematography was cool in terms of, like, the color like lots of like different types of color you know like traditional african dress and there's a lot of like yellows and oranges and greens and blues 
the story is basically of a place in Africa called Wakanda. And they have this, the most rare metal known to man called, it's not uranium and it's not adamantium. I feel like it's like a mix of those two words, but I can't pronounce it. Unobtainium, something like that. I don't know. But it, they they have like all the supply of this like rare metal or the vast majority of it. But they have it on the wraps and it's like a secret. And it's something that is used in weaponry. It's used in uh, energy for powering the 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 country. It's used in technology and it's like the most advanced technology on the planet. It's used in transportation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and Michael B. Jordan plays the son of an ancestor to this place that came to the states and wound up like betraying his like ancestors and and family and stuff from there, from uh, Wakanda. And so Michael B. Jordan always had like this like resentment type of thing towards this land that uh he felt from his vantage point like took everything from him took his fam took his his father um because black panther wound up killing killing him because which it was black panther's brother um but wound up killing him because he was about to shoot uh his you know like confidant or something like that and he like sold some of the unobtainium, whatever it's called, to some people, or or gave it away, or something like that, and that that was like the betrayal to to the nation. And but from Michael B. Jordan's vantage point, he seeing you know as a kid just witnessing his like dad being killed and kind of sort of learning the reasoning uh for it through his father's like journals and stuff like that uh when he gets older he builds this resentment towards towards wakanda and and those in power there and he has vengeance in his heart and i didn't think that warmonger aka michael b jordan was necessarily a bad guy like a bad dude, like the the antagonist of the movie. Even though, well, I can't say that. He definitely was the antagonist. But to me, he was more misguided because of his upbringing, because of how he came up, because of his surroundings, because of what happened to, to his pops. And growing up in, I don't know, it was like South Central LA type of thing, type of place. And he... So he was definitely misguided, but he was loyal and had a sense of justice. Like he was loyal to his father, to his father's legacy, to to that sense of vengeance. He was loyal to that. And he had that sense of justice of of wanting to right a wrong. And to me, he was more of that than he was uh, an antagonist that, you know, just wanted world domination or some shit. Um, just for the sake of like power before he died, he also had this like epic line at the end of of the movie, which was something to the effect of bury me at sea, like my ancestors that knew that death was better than bondage. And he told that to the black Panther when black Panther asked him, you know, why don't you like join me or something like that? You know, let's join forces. Let's do shit together do good together or something like that or well actually no 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 no. my bad he i'm misremembering that part he um was gonna go to jail for his crimes he's gonna like stand trial or some shit like that yeah it definitely makes more sense um i like the like the banter between or the relationship between the uh, brother and sister it was, it was like uh funny that was like the comedic relief in in the movie the sister was cool. She was like this like tech geek and made all the technology and weapons. She was like the 
I don't know who the guy's called, former Botsworth or something like that, that makes all the weapons for 007. She was like that to Black Panther and happened to be his younger sister. Um, And Black Panther, by the way, like the guy uh, when he wasn't a superhero is the king of Wakanda. And interesting um like tie-in here which is, is something that i appreciate uh, of all the marvel movies and i don't realize it or notice it as much because i'm not like so entrenched in like the comic book world but in another movie i don't remember if it was avengers or if it was thor or captain america or something like that there's a speech in the un i'm um, being given by this african dude and then there's a there's a bombing and he dies and then the guy's son like runs towards him and um you know cries and stuff like that nothing he can do and then he takes his his father's ring and that was black panther that was the father black panther that killed the father when he was black panther um that killed the the father of or his own brother the father of uh, the warmonger guy played by michael b jordan and then the current black panther that you see in this movie is the one that like ran towards him you know his son and cried and took his ring and it was always like who is that guy um and now this movie answered that but that's just for me as a a layman i'm sure those of you that are into the comic books or whatever once you saw that and maybe like the emblem on the ring or or something like gave it away and or you knew the story of black panther you know um but i thought that was pretty cool and lastly definitely stay you know all marvel movies have shit after the credits and now they they've started the last few movies that i've seen started doing like double credit ending things like they'll play some of the credits and give you another scene and then play the rest of the credits and give you another scene at all the way at the end so stay for both and um something from the first one that stood out a lot to me was black panthers pretty much giving a speech at the un saying that you know they're no longer going to keep the unobtainium or whatever it's called under wraps and as part of their like secret fucking super advanced culture they are going to share their knowledge and their resources with the world etc um and he starts speaking to uh, coming to that realization because he realized that in times of crisis, wise men build bridges and foolish men build barriers. And I thought that was a really dope line that speaks to, and I'm sure the the writers were conscious of this when putting this uh, scene together. Um, you know, the setting is at the UN and he's saying these uh, powerful words of wise men in times of crisis build bridges, foolish men build barriers. Um, I'm sure they had today's economic climate and uh, political climate in mind with people like Trump in power that want to build barriers, literal barriers and build walls and uh, be divisive, etc. And here in the movie, they're showing like one of the most real powerful people in the world that's a fucking superhero and has unlimited potential that the world has never even seen before acting more towards the inclusive building bridges side of things as opposed to saying, you know, fuck the world and I'm going to rule this this whole thing. I thought that was pretty dope. But yeah, Black Panther, man, if you guys haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I was debating on, on uh, you know, just waiting for it to come out on DVD or, or download it when there's a good copy or some shit like that. But um, I definitely appreciate it seeing it in the theater it's like it was it was a theater type of movie you know what i mean it was like a i don't know like big action movies and stuff like that i think are really good for the theater not to say that i wouldn't watch it you know on at home or whatever but um but yeah no disappointments no um no issues with uh seeing it at uh the theater so you guys should check it out